There's this damn website on the internet that I'm pretty sure makes games for no other reason than just to troll the people that play them. They're called Encrypair Games, at least I think that's how it's pronounced. And what you're looking at here is, uh... Eh, eh, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. I'll just press X here. Six minutes will pass. At some random point during this interval, text will briefly appear, prompting you to press X if you do so in time, and do not press it at any other time. At the end of the six minutes, the screen area will change to blue, otherwise it will change to black. That... really is all there is to it. Someone came up with this idea. And not only came up with it, but didn't let the idea pass them by without a second thought and think, Haha, that's a silly game, as a way of amusing themselves during the normal course of daydreaming. No, they had to go out of their way and put time and energy into making this a real thing. And then on top of that, they let other people see this, and it's like... Psh, yeah, congrats. Whatever. Oh shit. Okay, then. Well, we're about half a minute into this, and we already got that out of the way. And better late than never, I guess. Or, I mean, better early than later. Fuck, you know what I mean. Oh, by the way, this timer wasn't part of the game itself. I added that to the recorded video. You know, just in case the two wildly different fonts didn't tip you off there. I mean, here's an example of the font the game uses. Very blocky. Now what you're looking at is a cropped screenshot of the pause menu that I'm putting on top of the video later, so I'm not really pausing the game now, and that's why the timer is still running. And... why should you care? It's just a pause menu, who gives a shit? Here's the thing. Other than simply notifying you that the game is paused, which would therefore stop the timer from continuing the increment forwards, this is one of the most useless pause menus I've ever seen. It says press P to pause, but that button doesn't do anything. It neither calls nor dismisses this menu. In order to pause or unpause the game, you have to click outside the game window to stop it. Or click inside it again to resume the game and therefore the timer. So I only found this out by accident. Next it says the zero key mutes the sound. Now just listen for a second. You hear that? No, you don't. You don't hear anything other than my monotone voice droning on about this shit. There's no audio that I've been able to find anywhere in this game, which of course also makes the two volume controls completely useless as well. And I'm pretty sure this game just genuinely has no audio to begin with, rather than it being my own fault. Other Flash games on the site could play music and sound effects back to me without trouble. So this game just fucking lied. And for no reason, either. I would almost go so far as to say it not only lied, but it's a broken promise. Except this game promises nothing. It didn't promise me any sound, although what game would? You would just kind of expect sound as a default in any other game. But this piece of shit is so bare-bones it hardly even qualifies as a type of game to begin with. It doesn't even come with graphics, not in any practical sense anyways. Imagine... Imagine... A Flash game that's less visually stimulating than the purely text-based adventure games you would type your way through during the era of DOS computers. But it didn't promise graphics. It didn't promise sound. It didn't promise anything. Which kind of makes the title of the game a paradoxical lie, now that I think about it. Oh yeah, and the one button you do use in the game, the X button, wasn't listed in there either, so... That's an extra level of fail. <sighs> imagine. Just imagine. There is literally, and I mean literally, not me being hyperbolic when pretending to be angry or exasperated for comedic effect, but there is literally a game now that's just as boring as watching paint dry. It's probably one of the simplest games I've ever seen since Critical reviewed 4 minutes and 33 seconds. At least when watching paint dry, you can let your mind wander with no consequence. And it's easier on the eyes. I mean, you could probably let your mind wander here too, but you still need to be attentive enough to press X. And I sat through this another time just so I could lose on purpose. It only gives you about one second to react. So you gotta be quick. 
you got to be very quick. I mean, ugh, stupid game. But does this count as a bad game? On the one hand, it's so stupidly simple and boring and devoid of any purpose or reason for existing that it has to come as close as possible to being able to be considered objectively bad, because it never makes any attempt to be anything more. But on the other hand, it never attempts to be anything more. Or rather, it's perfectly honest from the get-go what kind of game it really is. So in that sense, is it a good game because it's doing what it was designed to do so absolutely perfectly? There are games like Q-Op and Getting Over It, which are some of the most annoying and infuriating games in existence, yet they're fantastic games in the sense that they do what they were designed to do so brilliantly. To piss people off. To have an objective that's so conceptually simple, yet nearly impossible to achieve in practice, even with straightforward instructions. But if the game is indeed perfect, at least within that very subjective and narrow interpretation of that word, it still seems to run afoul of the title of the game itself. How can a game be perfect if it supposedly breaks any promises? Will this game break its promise to me? No. It turned blue after six minutes, just like the instructions at the beginning of the game said it would. So no promise was really broken after all. I've won the game, and yet, to my great surprise, I feel no sense of victory. No feeling of accomplishment, no dopamine rush. I, myself, simply feel broken. I don't know what I was thinking, entertaining the notion that this, even in a very twisted perception of the word, could be a perfect game, or even a good game to any degree. It's the worst game ever made. This isn't just a terrible game because you simply get bored staring at a blank screen for several minutes. Oh no, 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 no. It's more psychologically insidious than that. You might go a bit crazy just sitting here staring at that lifeless rectangle of white pixels. Because you still know, you still remember in the back of your hazy mind that this game is called Six Minutes of Broken Promises. And you start to wonder, what if that message to press X just never shows up? What if you sit here for six minutes and there was no message telling you to hit X at a random interval? That would count as one broken promise. And it would be a horrible realization if, at the end of it all, you have to look deep inside your soul, face yourself, and accept the reality that you sat there for a full six minutes with nothing to show for it. Even if there was a message, and you successfully hit X at the right time, you might start to suffer from the mindset that falls victim to the sunk cost fallacy. So you have to keep going. Sure, you would technically win, but at what cost? Your dignity? Your sanity? Your boredom, perhaps, might inspire you to try and be clever. Maybe you'll think to open another tab so that you can watch YouTube on one half of the screen while keeping the game in the corner of your eye. That's how I managed to find out about the weird pause menu. But then you grow paranoid. What if you never saw the message to press X? Not because the game broke the promise that it would show you such a message, but because you were too distracted by that YouTube video and not paying close enough attention to the game. And you ended up missing the message. Would you feel compelled to play for potentially another six minutes, and this time force yourself to stare at a blank screen? Potentially wasting even more time if, indeed, you didn't miss the message, but... There was a never a message that the game was going to offer anyways. The paranoia would set in, and you have a choice to make. Do you keep playing, or do you get out while you still can? But even with the knowledge that 
Going forward, the game will eventually deliver the message to you, the recipient, the gamer, the victim. Is it worth it? Is it worth trying to win everything? To declare, either to yourself or to the world, that you have claimed victory? Even if it's a fearic victory? No. No, it isn't. It will never be worth it. The game promises you that.